Welcome back to Poem Mister Channel. We've noticed that many of our users are interested in integrating their Poem Mister inverters with Home Assistant. In this video, we will walk you through the full process of integrating a Poem Mister inverter into the Home Assistant platform. To support user of all experience levels, we will start from the very beginning, setting up Home Assistant. If you've already completed the setup, feel free to skip ahead to five minutes and thirty-four seconds. There are several ways to set up Home Assistant. In this demonstration, we will use VMware Workstation as our test environment. Of course, other options like Raspberry Pi plus SSD, a NAS with Docker, or an x86 mini PC are also viable. Step one: Download and install VMware Workstation. Visit official VMware website, click on Product, then navigate to See All Product. Find and click on Fusion and Workstation, then choose Download. You will be redirected to the Broadcom login page. If you don't have an account, complete the registration process. Once logged in, download appropriate version of VMware Workstation Pro for your system. After downloading, launch the installer and follow the setup guide to complete installation. Then start VMware Workstation. Step two: Download Home Assistant. Go to the official Home Assistant website and download the VMDK installation file. Step three: Create a virtual machine and import Home Assistant. Unzip the VMDK file you downloaded. Open VMware Workstation. Click Create a New Virtual Machine. Choose Custom. Then click Next. Click Next again. Then select I will install the operating system later. For the OS type, choose Linux, and for the version, select other Linux 5.x kernel 64-bit. Name your virtual machine and continue. Configure the number of processor and cores. Assign the disk capacity and select NAT for the network type. Lift the default LSI logic for I/O controller. And choose the SATA as the disk type. Then select Use an existing virtual disk and open the virtual disk file you unzipped earlier. Choose Keep Existing Format. Then click Finish to complete a VM creation. Afterward, open Edit Virtual Machine Settings to adjust the memory, network, or other preference. Navigate to the VM folder. Open the VMX file with a text editor, and add the line firmware equal EFI below the encoding line. Save and close the file. Step four: Launch Home Assistant. Go back to VMware Workstation and power on the virtual machine. If prompted, click Yes to continue. When the system displays an IPv4 address, it means Home Assistant has launched successfully. Make a note of that IP. Step five: Initial configuration of Home Assistant. Open the web browser and enter the noted IP followed by the colon a one two three. Press Enter. You will see the Home Assistant initialization screen. Wait a few minutes, depending on your network speed. Once the welcome page appears, click Create My Smart Home. 
Create your account by entering your name and password. Select your location and country to enable localized services. Home Assistant will ask for permission to send anonymous usage data. Click Next to proceed. Then, the system will scan your network for compatible devices. Click Finish to complete the setup and assess the Home Assistant dashboard. Step 6. Flash the firmware. Now let's integrate the Pollmaster Inverter using Solar 2 MQTT. MQTT acts as an initial translator in Home Assistant, allowing devices with different brands and protocols to communicate using a lightweight language. With essential broker like Mosquito, devices can publish to a topic and the Home Assistant can subscribe to that topic for unified control. So what make MQTT so awesome? Here are the three main perks. It's plug and play. You don't need to mess with terms of settings when adding new devices. It's super efficient. It works smoothly even if your network isn't greatest. It's smart. You can set up real-time automation that just work right when things happen. All right, here's what you will need to get started. For hardware, a D1 minute, that's an ESP8266 based board, a USB data cable, a network cable, a DC DC bar converter to power the D1 mini, and a MAX3232 adapter to handle the communication. For software, Tasmortizer, this is a tool we will use to flash the firmware. The Solar 2 MQTT firmware, it works with a bunch of different inverter models. Don't worry about hunting everything down. We've packed all the files you need into Google Cloud folder. Just check the link below this video to download them. Connect the D1 Minute to your computer via USB. Open Tasmortizer. Select the correct COM port and firmware file. You can check the COM port in Device Manager. Enable self-resetting device. So, Tasmatizer can handle reset and flash model automatically. Click Tasmatize. Wait for the process to finish. Then, click OK and unplug the D1 Mini. Step 7. Hardware Connection Solder the D1 Mini, MAX3232 and DC bar converter according to the wiring diagram provided. Then use a DB9 to RJ45 adapter cable to connect the entire module to the inverter. The pin layout is shown in the diagram. Since pin 4 and pin A of the inverter's RS232 port are defined as travel power supply and ground respectively, Connect the positive and negative terminals of the DC bar converter to pin 5 and pin 9 on a MAX3232, which in turn should be connected to pin 4 and pin A of the inverter's RS232 port. The DC-DC bar converter will step down the 12V power from the inverter's RJ45 port to 5V, providing power to D1 Mini. As an alternative to using the bar converter for power supply, you may also power the D1 Mini using a USB power cable connected to the power bank or other 5V USB power source. Step 8. Wi-Fi and MQTT setup Once flashed, the D1 Mini will create a Wi-Fi hotspot named solar to mqtt ap Connect to this hotspot using a phone or a computer. After connection, your browser will open the configure page automatically. If not, go to 192.168.4.1 manually. Click Configure Wi-Fi. Select your network and enter the password. Click Save to apply settings. Once Wi-Fi configuration is complete, the Solar 2 MQTT hotspot will automatically shut down as the device connects to your designated Wi-Fi network. Please verify that connected network matches what was configured. Any discrepancy may interfere with subsequent Solar 2 MQTT operations. Next, we configure MQTT. 
Solar Tube MQTT is now part of your network, so you will need to find its IP address. Use the iNet network scanner or log into your router using the address and the credential printed on the router's label. Enter Solar Tube MQTT's IP into your browser. Click Settings, Configure to open the configuration page. Before filling in broker details, go back to Home Assistant to install the Mosquito Broker add-on. First, enable Advanced Mode under User Settings. Then, go to Settings, Add-ons, Add-on Store, find Mosquito Broker and install it. If installation fails, click the three-dot menu, go to repositories and add the two URLs we've provided below this video. After adding them, refresh the page and install the Mosquito Broker. Enable the watchdog option and start the add-on. Then go to Settings, Devices and Services, click Add, Submit, and Finish. Now let's create a dedicated MQTT user. Go to the Settings page, click People, Users. Please make sure you have enabled advanced mode in the user settings earlier, otherwise you won't be able to add a new user here. Click Add a User, enter the names and password, enable local access only, and finally click Create. Return to MQTT configuration. Click the three dot menu, then click Reconfigure in the top right menu. Set broker to your Mosquito IP to make it easier to remember. We set MQTT broker address to be the same as the IP address of Home Assistant. Then enter the same username and password you just created. Enable advanced option, then click submit. Click submit again. Next, return to the settings page. Click the three-dot menu icon in the top right corner and select Restart Home Assistant. Back in Solar 2 MQTT, file in the same MQTT info. Set refresh interval to 10 seconds, enough for solar monitoring without overwhelming the network. You may choose to enable to send style transmission or HA discovery and dark mode using the respective toggles. Also, set an HTTP username and password to restrict access to the web UI. Click Save Settings, then log in with your HTTP credentials. The ESP will reboot and show the dashboard. Step 9. Add MQTT Explorer for monitoring. Back in Home Assistant, go to Settings, Add-ons, Add-on Store, find MQTT Explorer and install it. Once installed, turn on these toggles and start MQTT Explorer then return to Devices and Services, MQTT, and click Configure. You will see options for Publish a Packet and Listen to your Topic. This represents MQTT's Publish Subscribe mechanism. Use this to test your broker. Enter the same topic in both Publish and Subscribe field. Add a simple payload. Once the message is received, you will see it displayed in the real time. You can also choose quality of service levels. QoS0, at most once, no delivery guarantee. QoS1, at least once, may deliver duplicate. QoS2, exactly once, reliable but slower. Next. Let's proceed to testing with MQTT Explorer. 
Launch MQTT Explorer and create a new connection. Enter project name, input MQTT server address configured earlier, and enter the MQTT username and password created in the previous steps. Click Save, then click Connect. Once connected, you will see the previously sent topic and its corresponding message. In the Publish section, enter message and click Publish. You should immediately see the corresponding content received on the left side. Next, return to the Solar2 MQTT web interface. You will notice that after successfully setting up the connection, the inverter information is now properly displayed on the interface. Step 10. Verify inverter connection. Return to Devices and Services, MQTT. You will see that Home Assistant has detected the inverter and multiple sensors. For example, one device and 23 entities. Click Device to view detailed data. Go to the Overview page to see the automatically generated dashboard card. Displaying real-time values like voltage, current, power, and temperature. That completes integration of your Pellmister inverter into Home Assistant. You can now monitor your system remotely and begin build a smart, automated energy management setup. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check the links in the description. We will be sharing more videos soon on how to other Pellmister inverter models work with Home Assistant, plus more content on Home Assistant and Solar Assistant. Stay tuned.